and welcome back to Will's Recap Channel. I'm thrilled to have you join me today as we delve into the captivating world of cinema. Today we're exploring a remarkable 2017 Norwegian historical drama film that takes us on an unforgettable journey through courage, resilience, and the indomitable human spirit. Get ready to be spellbound by The Twelfth Man, a gripping true story that unfolds in the aftermath of a failed anti-Nazi sabotage mission where Norwegian resistance fighter Jan Balsrud faces the daunting task of escaping the clutches of the Gestapo in the snowbound landscapes of Scandinavia. It's a tale of survival, sacrifice, and the unyielding will to defy tyranny. So grab your popcorn, settle in, and let's embark on this cinematic adventure together. The narrative unfolds against the backdrop of World War II, where German Nazis occupy Norway, and Hitler establishes Festung Norwegen. As the German war machine colonizes the country, it strategically moves to the far north, leading to significant losses for Allied convoys in the battle. Simultaneously in Scotland during 1943, British forces initiate training for Norwegian soldiers, tasked with executing crucial sabotage missions in their homeland. Subsequently, the major officer engages in a conversation with the sergeant, inquiring about the commander officer's whereabouts. The sergeant promptly points out the location and begins narrating the harrowing story from its inception. Operation Martin unfolded on March 24th as 12 Norwegian resistance fighters embarked on a fishing boat laden with eight tons of TNT, sailing towards Norway. Their primary objective was to sabotage German airfields and installations, necessitating the destruction of these facilities. However, the narrator grimly reveals that only one man survived the mission, with the rest falling victim to the Nazis. Returning to the major officer upon locating the commander officer, he announces his intention to retrieve the report from Lieutenant Jan Balsrud. Subsequently, the major officer observes Jan, who is facing the expansive oceanic scenery, while tightly embracing the most confidential files on his person. In London, a radio news report discusses the concerns of the people in Norway, pondering on the mood in England as they witness the invasion of German Nazis in their homeland. Despite the evident suffering, the reporter responds with unwavering conviction, asserting that, despite the delicate nerves, the morale in England is far from weakened. Instead of sowing discouragement, he reassures the listeners that they are growing stronger with each passing day. Shortly thereafter, Jan, one of the 12 Norwegian resistance fighters, attempts to rescue his comrade, Herr, in the frigid sea, as they strive to escape from the distant gunfire of German Nazis. Unfortunately, their mission encounters trouble upon reaching Norway, where their local contact is discovered to be long dead. This revelation prompts a German sympathizer to inform the Germans about their arrival, leading to the compromise of the Norwegian resistance fighters' real identities. Fortunately, Jan and Per manage to safely traverse the fjord, swiftly hiding from the pursuing German Nazis. However, Jan is suddenly thrust into a harrowing scene as he witnesses his crew members being ruthlessly gunned down by the Germans. Shockingly, one of the German soldiers spots Per, pointing the gun at the back of his head as he walks backward to join the line of arrested Norwegian resistance fighters. As Jan helplessly watches his comrade walk away, Per imparts a final message, urging him to ensure that their mission is not in vain. Simultaneously, another German soldier retrieves a briefcase near the fjord and hands it over to Colonel Walter Wenders, who leisurely rounds up the remaining ten resistance fighters on the beach. Inquisitive, Sigurd questions one of the Norwegian fighters about the contents of the bag, but the response is uncertain. Suddenly, during interrogation, Walter notices Jan attempting to flee. Despite being shot in the foot, Jan manages to escape. On the first day of torment under the German Nazis, cold water runs down Jan's arm as he improvises a makeshift bandage for the gunshot wound on his foot, using socks to cover it. Soon after, he observes the skies erupting in flames indicating that the German warship has located their fishing boat in the sea. Acting swiftly, Jan braves sub-zero temperatures, swimming across the fjord to find a hiding spot. 
After a while, Jan walked shakily, his once brown beard now adorned with white ice crystals, mirroring the transformation of his eyebrows. Fortunately, locals extend a helping hand, risking their lives to aid Jan in evading the Germans. Grateful, John explains that he only needs warmth to cease the incessant shivering and instructs them that in case Germans inquire, they should say he threatened them. During their conversation, Anna's son enters the room, prompting Jan to inquire about the directions to Tromsoya. Meanwhile, Sigurd takes the remaining Norwegian resistance fighters in Tromsoya to execute. Later, Herr Sturmbannfuhrer arrives to open the briefcase seized by German soldiers on the fjord. Sorting through the documents, he instructs his men to translate the contents. Upon counting the prisoners, he queries the whereabouts of the 12th man, Jan, noting that they were supposed to capture 12 fighters in the fjord. Disappointed, he orders Walters to search every house in the area, focusing on individuals with medical knowledge, assuming that Jan is still alive. On the other hand, Jan manages to reach the shore with the assistance of Anna's son. Subsequently, a midwife aids him in treating his injured foot, advising him to head to the hospital if he wishes to prolong his days. Consulting his map, Jan contemplates his destination just before German soldiers approach their location. Regrettably, in the search for Jan, two Norwegian resistance fighters succumb to the torment inflicted by the German Nazis during interrogations. On the other side, Herr demonstrates Jan's survival from cold water by immersing himself in the sea for over 20 minutes. Subsequently, Jan reaches the Karanis, seeking help from the midwife's son. Upon reaching his house, he discloses his escape from the clutches of the Germans and his intent to rescue his crew. Following this, Gudrun, a nurse at a hospital, aids Jan in finally healing his injury, enabling him to walk properly during his travels. After some time, Jan embarks on his journey to Tromsoya, seeking information from Gudrun before his departure. Without hesitation, Gudrun reveals that the Germans discovered Jan's secret documents, leading to mass arrests of people in Norway. While listening, Jan receives news about his crew, learning of Sigurd's torturous death and Eric Reichelt, who remains alive. The rest of the crew is slated for execution later that night. After some consideration, Jan alters his plan, informing Margaret, Gudrun's daughter, that he won't be able to help his crew escape. Instead, he decides to take a route toward Sweden, emphasizing its status as a neutral country, where he believes he will find safety. As night descends, the Norwegian resistance officers are prepared for execution. Falling into line, Walter attempts to mock Herr, asserting that Jan, the twelfth man, is already dead and that the Reich main security office is contacting him for the report. Despite this, Herr clings to the belief that Jan is still alive. While Walter endeavors to convince Herr of Jan's demise, the officers, undeterred, unexpectedly break into song, belting out their anthem as they await their impending execution. The following day, Jan arrives at his next destination, the house of a local fisherman named Adam Schmidt. Afterward, Adam assists him onto a fishing boat to escape Rebenasoya. Upon reaching the ship, Jan examines his injured foot when suddenly Adam reappears, offering his backpack, skis, food, and extra clothes for Jan's journey. Fortuitously, Adam extends his support further by offering Jan a uniform to conceal himself. Upon reaching Lingside, Adam devises a plan to help John evade detection by the Germans during his journey to Lingside. While detailing the strategy, Adam warns John to be cautious of a skilled German soldier named Kurt Stage, who firmly believes Jan is still alive. According to Adam, Kurt is relentless, and no saboteur has ever escaped him. Jan's successful journey to Sweden would be a significant blow to Kurt. Meanwhile, Herr reluctantly accepts the reality that they have captured the 12 Norwegian resistance officers. He instructs his men to type a letter and send it to Berlin promptly. To Walter's surprise, he commends Herr for his decision. After a while, Jan finally arrives at the shore on his way to Lingsided. Before leaving the beach, a fisherman reminds him to leave the boat adrift to conceal his landing location. Once Jan crosses the mountain, he will reach the border. 
a journey that may take two to three days, depending on the weather. Fortunately, he has skis to increase his chances of a successful escape. On the seventh day of his escape from Lingzedet, Jan nearly falls into Hare's grasp as he skis down a slope. Fortunately, Hare fails to recognize Jan and allows him to continue on his way, unaware of the identity he just narrowly missed. To Jan's surprise, a military plane appears and Hare attempts to shoot him. Jan manages to evade the gunfire, but the constant shooting triggers an avalanche on the mountain. Unfortunately, Jan experiences intense pain as he becomes engulfed by the snow from the avalanche. Simultaneously, Hare receives a report from his soldier about Jan's tracks in Lingzeidet and the possibility of his survival. As he walks towards one of his soldiers, who was instructed to send the letter to Berlin, Jan, with blood in his eyes, struggles to crawl out of the snow as he reaches the border. Fortunately, Jan narrowly escapes just before two German Nazis arrive at his location. Subsequently, he begins to experience hallucinations, talking to himself as he walks through the Lingzeidet forest. Unfortunately, the German Nazis recover some of Jan's belongings left behind in the aftermath of the intense escape. Meanwhile, Marius Gronvoll observes Jan approaching their location as the German sympathizer interrogates Marius about Jan. Marius steadfastly refuses to divulge any information, prompting the German sympathizer and his soldier to depart from the farm. Afterward, Marius and Gudrun swiftly approach Jan to provide him with care. On the 13th day of surviving on the Gronvoll farm, Jan awakens with Gudrun by his side. As Jan removes the cloth covering his eyes, Gudrun mentions that he's been talking in his sleep. Jan, recognizing the importance of the information he holds, insists that it's better for Gudrun not to be aware of the details. Suddenly, Hare and his men arrive at the Gronvoll farm for the second inspection of Jan. During the search, Hare comes close to discovering Jan in the hayloft, but Jan skillfully conceals himself using the haystack. Following this, the Gronvoll family places Jan on skis, moving him out of the farm and enticing the soldier onto a boat. Thankfully, Marius successfully drives Jan to another mountain, evading the scrutiny of the Germans. Later, Marius escorts Jan to a small shelter, allowing him to rest as he continues to grapple with his injuries. During one day of rest, Jan experiences a nightmare about being captured by the German Nazis. As he wakes up, he sluggishly opens the door, checking for any signs of people outside. However, his dreams continue to haunt him with repetitive nightmares throughout the night. The torment prompts Jan to consider drastic measures, contemplating cutting his injured foot to end his suffering. On the 26th day, Marius and his men return to Jan's shelter at the Savoy Hotel, delivering the news about the route to Sweden. Overjoyed, Jan eagerly prepares himself while observing Marius and his men construct a sleigh for him. Subsequently, Jan is provided with soup for his journey. While Marius readies himself, he informs Jan that someone from Mandalin Town will meet them to help Jan cross the border. Despite the challenges of maneuvering the sleigh on steep mountains, Marius and his men successfully transport Jan to Mandalin. However, Marius is unable to connect with the individuals who were supposed to assist Jan near a large rock, leaving Jan with no choice but to proceed alone. Before leaving him, Marius conceals Jan under the large rock. Marius assures Jan that the Mandolin boys will use the Hello Gentleman code to locate him. As night falls, Jan battles the freezing weather, but he endures, finding solace in watching the Aurora Borealis light up the sky. One day, a Mandolin boy informs Marius that they made a mistake in finding Jan. Instead of going to the stone in Olmavagi, they mistakenly went to Olmajarvi. Disheartened, Marius decides to mark the stone himself and, along with Agneta, sets out to locate Jan. Upon reaching the stone, they discover Jan alive and still breathing. Agneta immediately tends to his needs while Marius marks the spot. Jan sends his regards to Gudrun as Marius and Agneta leave him once again. On the 36th day of evading the Germans, the Mandalin boys finally arrive at the Gentleman Rock and rescue Jan. Migo wakes Jan announcing that he will escort him to Sweden. Despite the wintry weather in the mountains, 
Migo and the boys successfully bring Jan to a safe resting place, but they accidentally encounter a blizzard. Jan begins to panic upon realizing that they turned back, prompting Migo to explain that they spotted Germans near the border. While resting, Aslak Fosvol appears and tends to Jan's injured foot. During the treatment, Jan recounts the story of the Norwegian resistance fighters and how the German Nazis fired upon their fishing boat to eliminate them. Jan reveals that they ignited the TNT and leaped into the water near the fjord, but he is the sole survivor of the German onslaught. Fortunately, locals discreetly visit Jan in the cave daily, providing him with sustenance as he awaits the melting snow that will allow the Mandolin boys to transport him to Sweden. Eager to understand the logistics of pulling him on a sled, John inquires, prompting Migo to express uncertainty about Jan's strength. Determined to escape the Germans, John reassures Migo of his capability to assist in the process. Later, Migo receives a clue from Sami that they should move Jan immediately before the Germans discover his hiding place. On the 59th day of surviving in the cave, Migo finally takes Jan out and places him on the sled. Migo and Uslak spot reindeer scattering across the wintry field, sparking the idea to tie a rope to one of the strongest reindeer, enabling John to reach the border more quickly. However, on the 63rd day, Hare discovers Jan's hiding spot on the shore of Mandolin. In response, he orders his men to torture Gudrun and Marius in an attempt to force them to reveal information about Jan's escape. Meanwhile, Jan inadvertently loses the tied rope on the reindeer, causing his sled to come to a halt in the middle of the snowfield. In a desperate moment, Jan contemplates taking his own life, fearing capture by the Germans. However, his reindeer unexpectedly returns for him, allowing Jan to escape the dire situation and run away from the snowfield. Fortunately, Jan manages to evade the German Nazis, thwarting Hare's mission to eliminate all 12 Norwegian resistance fighters. Three months later, Jan hands over his secret files to the major commander and dedicates himself to training recruits until the liberation of Norway. His resilience and survival contributed to the eventual success of the Norwegian resistance. What are your impressions of this film? I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions. Feel free to share your comments below. If you enjoyed the content, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more. Thanks for tuning in.